In this video, we are going to go over some of the basic functions and features within the plant section on the Canix web app. You're going to be spending quite a bit of time in plants if you are a grower or cultivator. To access plants, you're going to go to plants from the left sidebar and you'll see a drop down of different things to choose from. We're going to start with going to plant batches and active. It was the screen where we started this video. You'll see the various columns from tag to facility, planet date, strain, room. But there's also extra columns you could add or extra columns you could remove. You can check off the boxes based on the type of data you want to show when you look at the active plant batches window. So as you can see, the columns disappear when the box is unchecked. Columns reappear when the box is checked. We're going to start by going and looking up a strain. So you can either scroll through the list if you have quite a few strains. I would recommend typing in the name of the strain in the filter box. For me, I'm going to look up a strain called cookie dough. And once the name of my strain appears, we'll go ahead and check the box off. So that way, when I'm looking at active plant batches, I'm only focusing on this particular strain. If I click on the plant batch tag number, it'll give me more detailed information pertaining to this particular batch. It's age, the planted date, how many immature plants, how many flowering plants. And out of the 10 flowering plants, when I clicked on tag plants in the top right corner, it showed me every individual unique tagged planting. So we're going to go in the top right hand corner and when we click on actions, we're going to create a new batch. I want a new plant batch of this cookie dough strain. And we'll go through each of the individual action items throughout the course of this video and in a later video as well. So if I click on create batch, I can either choose between a clone or seed. So that's not derived from a parent, or I can create a batch directly from a mother plant. For this demo, we'll do clone or seed. It'll show an available batch tag we can use, but if we want to keep things sequential, we can click on the lowest available tag number that's grayed out. And you'll see when we do that, it'll change the batch tag number to 0242. Choosing between seed or clone, we're going to go ahead and choose clone. For the plant batch room, you can scroll through the many options that you have saved, or in this case, we will just select default room. The strain is the strain that we're going to be working with, cookie dough. For the number of immatures, you can go between 1 or 100. Usually the max is capped at 100, so we'll do 100 for this demonstration. And then you can select the planted date. It will always default to today's date, but we do recommend anytime you're doing anything in terms of an action that should be recorded or logged in Canix, you do it the day of. So now we have two plant batches of the cookie dough strain. You'll see from the planted date that was saved and the number of immatures. We have nothing in vegetative or flowering yet, but we're going to go through that later in this video. So I can always check off the box next to the particular batch tag. Or if you want to make edits in bulk, you can select all. So if we go to the top right hand corner and we click on actions from the drop down menu, you'll see that different actions appear based on us having a plant batch selected. We're going to review bulk package plantings and package unrooted cuttings in a later video. We'll start in the beginning from destroying plantings. Maybe I had some plantings as they went through the immature phase that didn't make it. Now, if I click on where it says reason, in the center of the screen, it's going to give me a mini menu where I can automatically fill in the batch summary for destroying plantings. 
or we can fill out this information from the left sidebar and just apply each option one at a time if we don't need to change everything. So you can click on the destroyed date. You can put in the reason. In this case, we will just say due to disease and the amount of plantings to destroy. We'll say 20. And then if I click apply, it's going to apply each option to the batch summary in the center of the screen. So we have the cookie dough strain with all the information in the batch summary. But let's say I wanted to change something. I could still click on reason. And maybe I want to change the number to destroy to 30. If I click save, it updates the amount of plants to destroy. But we'll just change it back to 20. If all the information looks correct, we're going to click on submit in the top right hand corner. And it will say plants successfully destroyed. Going back to the active plant batches screen, we're going to select our plant batch we want to work with. And in the top right hand corner, click actions. The next option we're going to review is if we wanted to change the location for this plant batch. When the sub menu pops up in the middle of the window, you can click on new location. Now we're either searching for the room or we could type in the name of the room in the search bar. I know I would put it in area 51 and if I clicked on submit, it would ask, are you sure you want to move these plants to this new location? But let's say I want to relocate all of the plant batches tied to the cookie dough strain to a new location. We could check off the secondary plant batch and go back to actions and we can change the room locations in bulk. So now if I go back to new location and I click on area 51, when I click submit, it'll say, are you sure you want to submit two plant batches to area 51? And right there, the location has been changed for these two plant batches. There's quite a few actions you can do in bulk outside of just changing rooms, but we will review those in a later video. So we're going to go back to actions in the top right hand corner for this one plant batch. And we're going to go to update growth phase. So in this case, we're going to be updating some immature plantings to move to the vegetative phase. Now, depending on your state, you may just only have a flowering phase and not a vegetative phase. So keep that in mind. So just like last time, we can either make updates from the left sidebar or we could click in the center and make quick changes. So for amount to update, this is how many plants we're going to be moving to the vegetative phase. In this case, we'll say 10. And then you'll probably want to change the location of the room. You most likely don't have your immature sitting in the same room as plantings that have moved to the growth or vegetative phase. So we're just going to select grow room and you'll notice with the tag numbers, since we're changing 10, it will automatically show you the tag numbers in sequence from beginning to end for the individual plant tags that you will have moving them to the vegetative phase and clicking submit successfully changes those growth phases for those plants. You even see it here. We now have 70 immatures and 10 vegetative. Reselecting that plant batch, we're going back to the top right hand corner to actions. And the next thing we are going to review is creating plant batch waste. Now you'll notice from the plant batch summary in the middle of the screen, you cannot make edits. When I click on it, nothing happens. So you have to make the edits from the left sidebar. For waste summary, you can scroll through many of the pre-made options you have to choose from. For us, we're going to choose cutting. Total weight, you can change how you manage and measure weight. In this case, we will just keep it at 100 grams. For the waste reason, you could say damage, you could say pesticides. We'll just select failure to thrive. And then if you wanted to add mixed material or additional notes, you could do that for data managing purposes. Waste entry. Remember, anytime you're logging any action in Canix, it's best to do it the day of, maybe the day after, but it will just keep everything running smoothly 
as you continue to manage all of these different items within Canix. Remember, this is bulk plant batch waste. So if you're doing all of your plant batch waste on the same day, it doesn't matter the strain, it can handle it within one window at one time. So we could add as many batches as we want, or take away as many batches as we want. But if everything looks good on the middle of the screen, we could go to the top right hand corner and click Submit, and the bulk plant batch waste will be submitted. Now back at my active plant batch, we're going to go to Actions in the top right hand corner. And if we wanted to edit this existing batch, we could do that. The little window looks just like when we created the batch from scratch. Or let's say I wanted to print labels for this active plant batch. It will take me to Canix's custom label feature. If I go and click on template on the left side, it'll give me different label templates to choose from. We're going to select plant batch and you'll already see some default available fields populate that information in the center of this potential plant batch label tag. I can increase or decrease the size of the barcode. I can make it wider. I can make it skinnier. I can click and drag the various available fields around the dimensions of this label to my liking. Let's say I want to add a company logo. If you go to the bottom left corner, I can put my company logo on this label. We can make it a little smaller, decrease it in size. And if we liked how this looked, we could go to the top right hand corner and click on print. For more information about printing custom labels, check out our YouTube video. It'll be provided in the description below. Now, as you can see, we still have our 10 plants that we move to vegetative. But what if I want to go to vegetative and move them to flowering? Remember, vegetative and flowering phases vary state by state. On the left sidebar, we can click on Vegetative and Tract. And this will show all of our plants that are currently in the vegetative phase. But if we go to Strain, I can always search for a cookie dough. And it will pull up what we moved from immature to vegetative earlier in this video shows all 10 unique individual plantings with all 10 tags. Now I could select at random if I wanted to change a growth phase for only certain individual plantings, or I could select all. What you would do is, it shows you in the top right hand corner, it's detected that I'm selecting multiple rows. So it gives me a tip as to how I could select in bulk or select all. So what you want to do is you just want to click on one, hold down the shift key and then click and it selects the entire row of cookie dough vegetative plants. You'll always see that actions option in the top right hand corner. If we wanted to destroy plants or toggle to mother or create plant waste, we'll go more into detail about vegetative and flowering in later videos. But let's say I just wanted to change this location. You have 10 plants in the grow room, and the grow room it really should be the veg room. So we click on veg room, we submit, and we have changed in bulk all 10 individual vegetative plants from grow room to veg room for the cookie dough strain. But let's say I want to move these plants to the next phase, which would be flowering. We could move these plants in bulk. It shows all 10 plantings that are selected, the flowering date. Now here's the thing, you cannot choose a flowering date in the future. Again, it's always good practice to make sure any actions that you're making within Canix, that these changes are taking place at your facility the day of. And for the new room, we should probably put them in the flowering room. Once everything looks good, we can click on change growth phase. Now we're still on the tracked vegetative plant screen. 
Remember, we just moved these plants to flowering, so we need to go to tracked flowering plants. And we'll do the same thing. We're going to search by our strain, cookie dough. Now you'll see there are some other cookie dough plants that are here in flowering, but if I sort it by date, I can see the plantings I just moved. So in this video, we showed you some of the basic features from the plants section on the Canix web app. We showed you how to create a batch. We showed you how to change a room location. We showed you how to destroy plants. We showed you how to create plant batch waste in bulk. And we showed you how to change growth phases from immature to vegetative and from vegetative to flowering. For more tips, tricks, and tutorials, please subscribe to our YouTube channel as we are uploading new training videos weekly. If you would like to review more information about our product or see it in action, feel free to reach out to us at canix.com.